Hi, this is Chris Collison, and uh, this is Quantum Mechanics, and we're looking at the moment at the harmonic oscillator. And one of the questions that I heard from a couple of you uh, was really about, come on, what's going on with these overtones? What's the the issue here? What what's what's happening? Um, what's this all about? So. Uh, let me try to tie together a few ideas in here and what I want you to think about is if you go to equation 5.29 in the textbook that's on page 216 and let's step back from that equation a second and say well look with these harmonic oscillators we have to include the potential energy in our Schrodinger equation so what equation 5.29 does um, is it starts to describe that potential energy but now in terms of this Morse potential. It, it starts to uh, mirror rea reality, it starts to try to describe what's actually going on in these diatomic molecules. What else can we say here? Well we're also going to recognize that the solution to the Schrodinger equation is already, even with our simplified perspective of even with our simplified perspective of potential energy, uh, the solution to that Schrodinger equation is already outside the scope of the class. Uh, this was when we were just considering the potential energy to be V equals half Kx squared. So again, when we start to think about, when we recognize that the potential is actually better described by this Morse potential, then we have to start um, adding some additional terms to our classical expression for the potential energy. So in the textbook we end up now with equation 5.40 and so this is really a description in classical terms of the curve um, that we, we, we you know, it's the potential energy uh, with, with these additional um, uh, terms in it that starts to get close to that Morse potential and you know how did we get that equation 5.40? Well, math, uh, the math chapter uh, D um, informed us as to how this equation 5.4 could actually be built on a Taylor series expansion. Um, so we've got this this more complicated potential in here, um, which would lead to a more complicated, when we think about it, it'll lead to a much more complicated Schrodinger equation. So we've got to, of course, put that new potential energy term along with the kinetic energy into the Schrodinger equation. But that means, you know, already this solution is bad enough, it's outside the scope of our class. We now put in this um, Taylor series expansion um, type potential energy term, we put that into a Schrodinger equation and we're going to find we have an even more complicated set of eigenvalues and, and eigenfunctions. So we're kind of, you know, there's a few a few pages in the textbook that really perhaps could we, we could spend um, a whole book describing um, what's going on. So we've kind of cut a few corners here, uh, but what the, the book starts to tell us is that when we solve this Schrodinger equation for this more complicated potential, uh, for this more complicated system, we find that some of the selection rules, so in here we see we find that some of the selection rules are no longer so concrete. What this means is these, these additional terms in the potential energy um, operator effectively um, lead to new eigenvalues and new eigenfunctions, uh, certainly new eigenvalues. Um, and we also find that these um, the selection rules are relaxed a little bit such that we can have a change in the um, vibrational uh, quantum number delta V of plus or minus 2 or plus or minus 3 etc. So these transitions we do actually see in real life infrared spectroscopy so they're very low in intensity but they still exist and this is one small explanation for why those terms do exist in the spectra that we actually record and you'll see this in uh, the experimental course uh, 445 that you might come across in your studies um, there are some exercises to start looking at, at, at how those additional spectroscopic features show up so all this section of the textbook does is it's saying hey we can get these these overtones we see them in in ir spectroscopy 
and this is the reason why they occur. So just trying to tie a few loose ends together there. Um, we're going to move on to now to the next section. We're actually going to think about what those uh, eigenfunctions look like in our solution to the Schrodinger equation for the harmonic oscillator. So thanks for, for uh, listening. Thank you.